Hi everyone, got another knife review for you. Thanks so much to Young's Backpacking for hosting this review. Uh, what you're looking at here is the Spyderco Native, and in this particular version it is in S30V. Now, talking about the actual um, steel itself, S30V seems to be the super steel of the month or the year. Uh, people have raved about it. I've yet to hear a bad thing about it. It's supposed to have incredible uh, corrosion resistance. It's supposed to take on incredible edge and hold it for a very long time. Uh, the only t two downsides that I've heard about it is number one, it is hard to sharpen just because it is so hard. So unless you're an experienced sharpener, you might have to go to a service to get it sharpened. And number two, uh, the cost. Uh, taking any knife, if you suddenly change the steel to S30V, you're going to end up doubling, tripling the cost. Um, and with good reason though, it's a high quality, incredibly durable steel. But uh, you're going to get what you pay for in that particular example. Um, I've seen blades go through a lot of abuse in S30V, like the ones that my friends have, and uh, they just keep coming back for more. And uh, if you do manage to dull the blade, which is not going to be very often, um, it's not going to happen often enough where it's going to be a problem. So then uh, you're not going to have the headache of having to resharpen it over and over. Uh, this particular version has an FRN handle, which I actually prefer to uh, say... Uh, stainless steel just because uh, it's a little bit lighter and it's a little bit more comfortable in hand I feel it's a little bit warmer uh, this has been tabletop by a bunch of different reviewers but I just wanted to do a review just because it gives me an excuse to play around with this knife on their case this is a lockback design and as you can see here there is a boy detent dent right here on the mechanism now people think that this is uh, just to make it easier to press the button that's not so the reason that this dent is here is so that when I'm grabbing the knife I don't accidentally um, engage the locking uh, mechanism and cause the knife to unlock. Uh, by putting this dent here, there's less chance of this getting actually depressed when I'm gripping the knife, and that keeps it uh, less likely from the lock from being disengaged. So um, I don't think it's really necessary, uh, just because the way I grip my knives, I don't feel that I'm in any danger of actually pushing this lock back, but uh, it's just a nice detail to have it there. As you can see here, there's the tension bar right there. That provides the resistance for the locking mechanism right there, which rocks on this hinge. And here is the pin for the blade itself. Now I really wish this would have been uh, held in by a torque screw. That way uh, I could adjust the the uh, tension on the knife itself on this hinge. But um, if it's pinned in right, I don't think I really have to worry about it. It locks very tightly. There is no place side to side or up and down. Great jimping on the back of the blade right here. Uh, pretty much Spyderco sets the standard in terms of jimping. They beat even Benchmade in terms of how functional and how well their jimping works on the back of their blade. You have an aggressive uh, knife blade style right here, uh, which is great for cutting and great for uh, whittling. I've seen some friends use this on wood. This thing just eats through wood like it's nothing. This particular example is in a full combination edge just because I think somebody actually has dibs on this knife. So that's another reason why I wanted to do this review just before uh, they had to let this go. I think this is going to be used as an emergency services knife for cutting through rope and things like that. So that's why it got ordered with a full combination edge. And as you can see here, this is made in Golden, Colorado in the United States. So if you're looking about buying uh, American made only, you might want to check out this particular version of the Native. Cool thing right here, you have a pocket clip, which it appears I think you can move it to left and right handed carry. And instead of having to use like a little torque screw, I love the fact that here you can use a full size screwdriver to remove that. Uh, I hate having to hunt around for a little screw, torque screw kit. Uh, with this full screw set, I, it makes it so much more convenient and I wish more knife companies would do that. This is actually the first knife I've seen that actually uses this particular style of adjustment for the clip, so that's great. The native itself is, uh, let's see if I can pull up the details on my laptop, please forgive me. But while I'm talking about that, um, a lot of people are talking about how they don't like lockback designs. Um, I actually prefer it more than anything else just because I feel it's a little bit more solid and more stable. And um, people complain just because uh, they say it's impossible to close it one-handed. Now, Spyderco, a lot of their knives have this generous choil area, so you can either hold it right here by the handle or you can choke up really close. As you can see, it's got this nice little guard right here so that you're not going to slip up on the blade. To choke up really high up on the blade itself. Now, because of this generous choil area, when I want to close the knife, what I do is I use my thumb to depress the thing and... As I disengage the lock, I can just flick it forward, and as you can see, my finger catches on the troll and not on the blade, so I'm not going to cut myself. And once I get it to this point, I just adjust my grip, and I can close it. Just to show you one more time, press on the lock to disengage it, and flick it forward, and it catches on the troll, so I don't have to worry about that. So that's an easy way to close a lockback blade one-handed. Now you're going to have to do a little bit of experimentation, uh, because some knives 
that have a lockback, the blade goes all the way down. So you have to be very careful to make sure that your particular knife you can do this with. Some knives, I've seen some people try to do this and they end up cutting themselves just because they don't have this troil area. But you can rest safe with the native just because uh, of that. You can, you can safely close this one-handed. So it's a nice little touch right there. Overall length is uh, 7 inches. The blade length from the end of the handle to the tip is 3 and 1 eighths of an inch. And uh, the actual cutting edge itself is 2 and 5 eighths of an inch. And the knife itself weighs 2.65 ounces. So it's a pretty decent medium size weight in terms of a pocketable carry knife. The only thing I would worry about is because of the looks of this thing, this has a very aggressive look to it. So, I mean, this might scare people when you pull this thing out. Plus, um, I live in California, which has a three inch blade limit. Now, even though the cutting edge is less than three inches, uh, they'll measure from the start of the steel to the tip. So this will be a little bit bigger for uh, actual like everyday carry in public in California, but in most states, this will be fine. Um, but great steel, spiraco quality, very ergonomic and uh, comfortable to hold, very sturdy as well, and um, great pocket clip. And uh, for this particular example, if you stop by Young's, I think this thing retails for about $79. So that's a pretty decent price for a Spyderco blade in S30V. And uh, yeah, if you guys like the native, you might want to go check it out. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.